Hi, it's Will and Derek with Tabletop Generals again. We are going to make a real quick video on the dice mechanic in Star Wars Edge of the Empire Beginner game because it's a little different from your standard D20 or D10 roll over, roll under. Um, in, our, okay, in our previous video, we talked about the, the, the color coordinations and the symbols and everything. Uh, just to make sure that it's clear, your positive dice will be green, yellow, and blue. Uh, the symbols that you can get are a success symbol, which is what you're trying to go for. That's what, if you have any success left over after you start uh, taking away all your penalties, will determine whether you pass or fail. Uh, a, tr a advantage symbol will not determine whether you pass or fail, but it could be a small side effect that will help you, and we'll get into that later. A triumph is kind of the best that you can get, and it's both of them. It'll count as one success and one uh, advantage. So it's like rolling a natural 20, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on the flip side, you'll have failures, which will take away from your success. You'll have threats, which will take away from your advantages. And despair, which is, once again, both a failure and a threat. Uh, if you're one. Right. <laughs> now, if you're ever trying to, to do any kind of roll, it's important to know that you do need to have one success in order to pass. If your successes and your failures negate each other and you have neither, you still fail. Um, well, you and I were talking about that a little earlier, and um, and we're using the example of the, the droid pre-generated character if he's trying to bluff his way past some other droids. And he came and Derek did a test roll and he's like, well, my successes and failures match. So I did not bluff my way past these droids. They're just like, no, you can't pass. Exactly. They're not like, no, you can't pass, you're under arrest. Or, you know, alarm bells didn't start going off. It's just like, yeah, that's like the key doesn't turn or something like that. That's one of the things I think that uh, could be very helpful in this system is, I know in other systems, you, a lot of GMs will be like, well, you failed by this much. So not only do you fail, but X also happens. Or you passed and you passed by so much, X also happens. They went ahead and kind of helped you out with that, with the, the advantages and the threats. So like what we were talking about earlier, even if uh, you know your successes and your failures negate each other out, you don't have either or, but you have one advantage, they they don't arrest you, They you're not suspicious, you just must be confused and they let you go on your way. Where if you didn't have any advantages and you actually had a threat on there, they'd be suspicious, they're calling it in, they're going to maybe arrest you, you might want to start running. Um, Why don't you uh, take us through the, uh, the it gives a pretty good example of a dice roll to, uh, in the book. Well, basically the way the game works is that you're going to use your ranks and your attributes. And you'll have two different numbers. You take the highest of the two. So for the droid, his intelligence is a three, which is the higher of the two. So we're going to take three of the green dice. And then his computer skills is a two. So two of the green dice will actually get upgraded to the nice yellow ones. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and determine the difficulty of the situation. Now the computer he's trying to hack into is going to be an average difficulty. So we're going to take two of the purple difficulty dice and that gets added to the dice pool. And for circumstantial bonuses, you get either one of these light blue ones for positive or one of these black ones for your negatives. Now in the example that they give, it is they're under heavy fire, so you automatically get one dice and he hurt his wrist, so he's going to get an extra negative dice. But he acquired a fragment of the code, so he already kind of knows what he's doing, so he's going to get one uh, circumstantial bonus dice. He'll take all of these and roll them. Do you want to go ahead? Here we go. So I've got... <laughs> well, this... Let's see, these are the negatives. Yeah. These the are the purple negatives, ones, yes. And then these are the positives. Okay, so here he's got, I know you can't see it, but he's got three of the threat symbols, and he only has two of the advantage symbols. So they're going to cancel out those two, and he's going to have one threat. So even if he passes, something bad is going to happen. And then I've got two successes and three failure symbols. So not only did I fail by one point, I also got a threat by one point. So. So uh, you didn't, like, in this example, in this particular example, he's trying to hack into a computer system to get by an alarm. So he failed. He didn't manage to get past the alarm, but because he also had a threat, 
your GM could go ahead and say, you actually set it off. And so now people are alerted to your presence. They're coming after you. Um, the pre-generated characters, one really nice thing, which you won't be able to see even if I held it up, but on the character sheet, it's got your skills listed, astrogation, athletics, charm, course, etc., 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 and then it's got your ranks, and then next to it, it has the dice pool. So, let's say I wanted to make an astrogation check, right? and it runs off of intellect. My intellect is two, but I have zero ranks in it. This is the uh, human smuggler character. Um, so, in my dice pool, since I have two ranks in intellect, it has two little green dice symbols right on the character sheet. So I know I'm going to be rolling these two little green dice symbols. And what difficulty would you give me on this? Uh, well, let's say you're not jumping too far. You could probably just go ahead with one with an easy jump. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to roll my, my two green dice and my one like purplish-blue negative dice. <laughs> okay, so you can't see it, but both my green dice came up blank. And then my, my negative dice came up with a failure and a threat symbol. So what would you have happened to poor Pash the Smuggler on his very easy astrogation check? It looks like he headed out and he just stalled. Okay, <laughs> well, went down, I did not get it kind of like in A New Hope when the with <laughs> yeah. the hyperdrive's not working. <laughs> So, I initially didn't like the dice mechanic in this because it's not numbers-based, and so I was like, I have to learn new stuff. But Fantasy Flight has done a really good job in laying out exactly how many dice and what dice you roll in the characters, and after just the example and then me rolling one, I understand it now. So, it, it, the learning curve is what, however long this video is, five minutes? Um, that's how the dice work in Star Wars Edge of the Empire Beginner's Game. Um, this is Will. This is Derek. Tabletop Generals. That's www.thetabletopgenerals.com. Have a great night.